Good morning. Good morning. The psalmist proclaims that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we have gathered here this morning to rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome this morning to worship those joining us here in person and those online. Uh, welcome this morning. Uh, there are a few announcements uh, in the bulletin that I would like to call to your attention. Uh, the first is a kind of a minor change in the service itself. Uh, we've um, gone back to not passing the offering plates. We're going to keep those, at least for the time being, uh, back at the uh, doors. So if you uh, are planning on giving, please do that on on your way out this morning. Um, however, uh, in order to keep the uh, beautiful piano music that we normally would have enjoyed during the um, offertory, uh, Rock is going to be providing uh, special music uh, during the anthem time that would normally be in the service uh, for the choir singing. Um, maybe someday we'll get back to normal. Um, and by then, I'm sure uh, I'll have to look up on old bulletins to figure out what normal looked like because I don't remember. But uh, so there's just a little bit difference uh, to the service this morning. We'll be sticking with that uh, for a while. Also, I uh, want to remind the deacons that they meet uh, this coming Wednesday at 2 p.m. in the fellowship hall. A uh, reminder also that we are having a reception following worship on Sunday, February 13th in the fellowship hall, uh, an opportunity to uh, greet Bonnie, or Bonnie, Bobby, and send her with our, uh, our love. And uh, we can greet Bonnie too, yes. We greet you every morning. It's good to have you here. <laughs> um, and uh, so I hope that you will be able to join us for that. Uh, special fellowship hour. Um, also a reminder of the annual congregational meeting coming up uh, Sunday, February 20th, following worship. And the purpose of that will be to receive the reports of the uh, committees of the church, to act on the terms of call for the pastor, and to elect uh, new elders. Are there any other announcements this morning? Oh, I forgot one as soon as I said that. Um, greeters want to thank everyone who signed up uh, last week, uh, who agreed to be a greeter. Uh, if you didn't get the opportunity to do that, I uh, would invite you to uh, see the clipboard, which is located on this front table up here. And uh, if you have any questions about it, uh, I'd be happy to uh, help you with that. We were trying to uh, fill Bobby's shoes as she's going to be leaving us and make sure that uh, we have all of our uh, ducks and beavers in a row. And I have to go both sides. Um, can't play favorites here. Um, but uh, if you are interested in uh, being a greeter, it is a it is so hard to uh, explain just how important that job is. Uh, in many cases, that is the first person that a visitor sees uh, when they walk in the door, and it really can make or break someone's experience uh, in in the church and. As they say, first impressions is everything. Uh, so we we need people to volunteer and uh, and greet each other, whether you've been here a thousand times or this is your first time. Uh, we need need those greeters. So uh, please do uh, sign up if you haven't done so already. Now, are there any more announcements? Yes, Charmaine. Okay, so uh, the sanctuary cleaning uh, is, the schedule is filling up, but we need uh, a substitute and then somebody for uh, September and November uh, to help out with, that there's already somebody signed up, but 
uh, we need a pair, somebody to help out. So, oh, some experienced person. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, let's say able-bodied. Um, we'll go. We'll go with that. Uh, and uh, it's not a overwhelming task, but it is an important one. And uh, it's just cleaning the sanctuary. Uh, we pay somebody to do the bathrooms and fellowship halls and kitchen. Yep. So there's a list and supplies and everything uh, in the uh, closet back there. So if you have any questions, see Sharma Lee. If you want to sign up to help uh, in September and November, or be a substitute, um, that would be great. Just talk to Charmelie. Thank you, Charmelie, for uh, coordinating that. Are there any other announcements this morning? If not, would you join me in the call to... Oh, goodness, birthdays. <laughs> I just turned my bulletin over. There it is. This is the first Sunday of the month, and... Do we have any February birthdays this morning? If you would, please stand. There's Kathy. Well, let's serenade. Oh, and Patty. Let's serenade Patty and Kathy. Happy birthday to you. To Jesus be true. May God bless and keep you. Happy birthday to you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for these dear friends and for the opportunity to celebrate another year of life and life together in your church. We thank you for bringing them here and making them a part of our lives together. We ask for your blessing of health and peace and strength uh, in, in this coming year and for the rest of their lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God Most High, you meet us where we live and you invite us to be a part of your purpose. All thanks and praise to you, for you hear our prayers for the church, for the world, and for all who live in it. We pray, O oh God, for your church and for all who work to bring others a word of compassion, hope, healing, and strength. Send your Spirit anew to work in us. We pray for peace among the nations and peace among all people. We especially pray for the people in Eastern Europe, and in the Ukraine. Oh God, we ask that peace would prevail. We pray for all who suffer from war or natural disaster. We ask, oh God, that you would provide, that you would heal and make whole. We pray for those who are oppressed, and for those who need courage to resist injustice, give them a voice and give those in positions of authority ears to hear the cries of those who are oppressed. We pray for those who because of illness or hardship are paralyzed by fear. We ask for healing. 
and we ask for courage. We pray especially this day for all who work as first responders and all who work in health care. We pray for our teachers, for all who serve the community, for those who are weary and tired through this pandemic. We ask that you would continue to strengthen and encourage us. O God of majesty and glory, through Jesus Christ, you summon us into your compassion for all creation. Renew us in your call and release us from all fear that we may testify both in word and deed to your steadfast love for all. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty God, by your Spirit, open our hearts that we might receive your Word. Open our minds that we might understand what you are saying to us. And open our hands that we might receive that message and be sent out to do the work of your Son. In his name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew." And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar and a, with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Then a reading from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God. He saw two bo boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. 
he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Have you ever felt inadequate for a job? Not sure that you were prepared for whatever it was that you had gotten yourself into. Maybe it was your profession and your first day of work or that first job that you had or the first time you held a child, a newborn. I remember as a nine-year-old sitting in our neighbor's kitchen listening to my mom who had just celebrated her 30th birthday, and if you do the math, she had me at 21. She was sitting at our neighbor's kitchen counter and was in tears. It was her 30th birthday. And I remember as a nine-year-old sitting there listening to her, being shocked that my mother was crying. And she was explaining why she was so upset, and she said, I somehow feel like something should be different. I'm 30 years old. I have to be an adult now. I'm not ready. And all I remember thinking at the time was, Mom, you have two kids. That ship has sailed. You're responsible for two lives, not just your own. But of course, I didn't say that. Years later, when I became a parent, <laughs> I knew exactly what she was feeling. One of the most difficult jobs I have ever had is being a parent. It's not easy. No matter how many books you read or seminars you go to, there is not anyone out there who can prepare you for the job ahead. Oh, you can learn some things along the way, but you cannot be prepared for every circumstance and every situation. 
In fact, it seems like the more important the job is, how easy it is to feel our own inadequacies. And those doubts and fears start to creep in. I remember my first day of seminary. I was one of the few in my class who had gone straight from high school to undergraduate to graduate school in seminary. And I was young and dumb. I was confident and maybe a little bit arrogant. I walked in thinking that I had it all figured out. And then at the end, they handed me a degree and I realized how stupid I was. They gave me a degree that said on the front of it, Master of Divinity. I wasn't sure what it was I had mastered, but I was pretty sure it wasn't divinity. How does one master divinity? I guess you'll have to ask Jesus that. The only degree that goes after that, unless you're looking for continuing ed, is a PhD. They now have added, uh, in the last few generations, a doctor of ministry. That sounds a little more reasonable, as opposed to master of divinity. The irony is, I saw this great post uh, on social media this week that just really resonated with me. It showed this man uh, standing and juggling three balls. And in the caption next to it, it said, what you thought ministry was going to be like. And then there's another frame underneath it, and the man is now juggling 12 balls, and he said, what, what seminary prepared you for? And then the bottom frame is what ministry looks like in 2022, and all you see is this man's head sticking out from balls all around. The irony is whether you are a pastor or a teacher or a parent or a homemaker, whatever it is that you are, you can't be prepared for every circumstance. Ask any first-year teacher the first time they stand up in their classroom and they'll tell you. Quite frankly, at that point, you're lucky they didn't eat you alive. For any who have ever felt that they were not up to the challenge, whatever the challenge is, I want to say to you, peace, and be of good cheer because you are in good company. In fact, the Bible is chocked full of great, important people who did not feel up to the task. Moses. God called him to go to his people in Egypt and proclaim to Pharaoh that God should set his people free. And the first thing Moses says is, I can't speak in public. Send my brother Aaron instead. And God called Moses anyway. We heard last week from Jeremiah, who says to God, when God calls him to be a prophet, he says, I'm just a boy. And God says, don't say you're just a boy. I'll give you what you need to do your job. Here is Isaiah, who has this incredible vision. And I have to admit, 
Had I had his vision, I think I would be, well, feeling inadequate also. In fact, this great majestic hymn that we opened up with, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God of, God of Majesty, this hymn is based off of, in part, this text. This vision of these great and amazing creatures, seraphs with six wings in front of the throne of God, the Lord of hosts. And the pivots of the thresholds shaking at their voices. Of course, Isaiah is going to feel inadequate. And Simon, Simon, the one in whom Jesus would build the foundation of his church. Simon, in his encounter with Jesus on the boat, is completely overwhelmed by the miracle that he has experienced when his ship, his boat, is about to sink because of the amount of fish they have brought in, just because Jesus said, put your nets out here. The feelings of inadequacy to the call are quite frankly, sometimes overwhelming. I've experienced that as a parent so many times. So many times when you worry about your kids, whether it is a physical thing or a broken heart that they're going through or whether it is a change in life that they are experiencing that you can no longer kiss away the pain. The feelings of inadequacy can be overwhelming. I think back to one of my favorite persons in modern day history. This little unassuming lady, did not have a large presence. She was quite short. She didn't have a big booming voice. And yet crowds gathered just to hear what she had to say. And it all started on the streets of Calcutta in India. It all started because she saw the suffering of humanity as someone was left to die in a street gutter. And it broke her heart, and she couldn't stand by and watch that human suffering happen. And so she decided to do something about it. And this little, quiet, unassuming lady, Mother Teresa, went on to be a Nobel Peace Laureate. It wasn't until after her death that the true greatness of the woman came out. The true greatness came out in the reality that her confessor, the person that she poured her heart and soul out to, wrote a book and told her story. And the irony is that this woman who did such great and wonderful things struggled deeply with her own doubts and feelings of inadequacy. In fact, there was a great deal of controversy uh, that uh, this author should not have said this, that uh, he had besmirched her reputation, but in my opinion, she became that much more wonderful. Because the reality is, God does the greatest things through people who are convinced that they're not up to the task. 
Isn't that amazing? Look at David. David is called in the New Testament a man after the heart of God. (laughs) David's story is full of, well, soap opera style indiscretions. I only have to say Bathsheba and you know what I'm talking about. A scandal that quite frankly would remove anybody else in leadership. Regardless of whether we feel worthy or we feel adequate to whatever it is that God has called us to do, whether it is being a pastor or a teacher or a parent or a spouse or a homemaker or whatever it is that God has called you to do, our success is not based on our feelings of worthiness or quite frankly, our feelings of preparedness. It's not based on information we've gathered. It's based on the one who calls us to do it, whatever it is. I'll tell you, we are in the process of uh, nominating elders and the nominating committee has met and we've called uh, several people and have asked and I've received uh, uh, a very good response and I am so grateful for that because um, we are having a turnover. um, Half of six of the 12 uh, elders in the church are eligible to rotate off session, which is unusual. Actually, we have uh, three classes of four, and it's only supposed to be four at a time. But with Bobby moving and Mary Ann's passing, we have six. It's interesting that in my position here, it's the tradition of this church that uh, the pastor is the one who calls and invites those uh, to consider ministry. It's not always that way in every church. Um, I have prepped and uh, and encouraged and coached nominating committees as they have gone out, excuse me, and made those calls and invited people. But for me, it's been kind of fun to be on this first approach basis. One of the things I often get when I call people and ask them is a sense of shock and surprise. Why would you want me? I have had to, well, I've had to argue a few times with people to convince them that actually it is who they are. And it is the fact that God is calling them through the voice of the congregation that has prepared them for ministry. Because if given the opportunity, many, if not all of us, would say, well, I'm not sure I'm up to the task. Or I've got too many things to do. My life is too busy. I'm not sure I can squeeze one more thing in. I suspect that's probably true of all of us. But God has a way of planting seeds and nurturing those seeds, and God is answering prayers. People are stepping up. I was concerned about uh, our transition and change in how we go about getting our ushers. And one of the reasons I was concerned about it is because Bobby has done such a great job of it. And we deeply, deeply appreciate all that you do. I promise I won't embarrass you every Sunday for the next three weeks.
But what we need is people to step up. It is kind of frightening, actually, to stand up and be there to greet. It's only a 30-minute thing, but you do have in the back of your mind that, well, what if I greet someone who's been a long-time visitor and I think it's their first time? Nobody wants to put their foot in their mouth. Friends, I do it all the time. Take a glass of water and swallow. It's not that big of a deal. If you greet someone and say, welcome, is this your first time? And they say, no, I'm sorry, I've been coming here for six months. You just say, I'm sorry, I had not met you yet. My name is Seth. Welcome. So the question for us is, to what is God calling us? God is calling each and every one of us to something. Maybe it's the job of grandparent or great-grandparent. Maybe it's to be an usher, an elder. Maybe it is to be a teacher, to be a friend, a companion. Friends, it doesn't depend on whether we feel we are up to the job. What matters is does God feel we are up to the job? What do you think the answer to that is? Do you think God thinks you're ready? Let me remind you of one thing Jesus said that always shocks and amazes me. He tells his disciples that because he is going to be leaving them and sending a spirit, a helper, an advocate, that they will do greater things than he has done. Think about that for just a minute. This is a man who raises the dead, who gives sight to the blind, who heals the sick. If you ever doubted, does Jesus believe in you? Don't doubt. Be of good cheer because he has called you and equipped you for whatever task is ahead. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith as is printed in the bulletin. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. In him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Amen. Dear friends, go forth with confidence and with peace, knowing that it is God who has called you and prepared you for the journey of head. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit be with all of us today, tomorrow, and forevermore. And all God's people said,
Amen.